Thank you, Dean. Okay, I, I really feel like this is one of, we were just discussing this, this is one of the really lost discussions that we have in the stockmanship and stewardship and the good cattle handling. And settling cattle is something that all of you sitting in your seats, I think this will probably make you more money than anything that we're going to do. Settling cattle. And we all talk about working cattle through the chute and all those things that are very, very important. But really, to uh, make money in this business, we need to cattle to either gain or reproduce. And when cattle aren't settled, when their mind isn't settled, then their guts aren't settled, and their body isn't settled, and then they don't gain to their maximum efficiency, or they don't reproduce as good as they should. So to me, all this stockmanship stuff is great and wonderful and good, but if we're really trying to get to the highest level of stockmanship, getting cattle ready to perform, no different than getting this horse to perform, or your crew to perform, you got to prepare things and get them settled, get them right in their mind and their body before they can really perform. And when cattle come in stressed or stirred up, Mother Nature in the past, if you don't know what to do about it, Mother Nature is the one that takes care of that and time and rest and all those things. But we as humans can really speed that up and help it a bunch if we start understanding the mind and how to get that mind settled so their body can go to work. Yeah. One thing I talk about in the stockmanship quite a bit is to <clears throat> think about how we're actually trying to use stockmanship to reduce stress. And there, you hear the term low stress livestock handling quite a bit. And to me, it's more about effective stockmanship and what we're doing. But I think there's a point where you can use really good stockmanship to reduce stress on cattle. And that's kind of what we're talking about here. And as you do that, then it kind of feeds through the system. But that the first interaction with people is always important. Uh, it may not be the, the best one. You know, if you're getting them out of the desert the first time, it may be a little western when you get them there, but the first time you have a chance, you need to try to settle them down and take that pressure off of them and let them know that what you're doing is not gonna be a threat to them uh, because that stimulates that change in mindset from <clears throat> thinking to reacting and a fear mechanism kicks in, into play. And any time that happens, as Kurt said, we're going to depress performance. And so that's where I think we can actually do some really good things. And in my experience with stockmanship, and this is, this is the area that really got me trying to get good at this, was trying to take some stress off some cattle that were uh, coming through auction markets, being co-mingled and shipped into us in a preconditioning operation. And it made a lot of difference in health in those cattle and performance of those cattle just by the way we received them coming off the truck. And then, you know, the way we handled them from there on out. But to me, it was really telling, and what really drove me to do more stock, stockmanship and start studying, and that was probably two years before we, I saw Kurt actually do this as a cattle raiser the first time. I was really starting to try to get better at stockmanship. So it really, if you get into it, it, it really helps a lot of different things. The cattle, but it also the people, the, the whole setup responds when we start this process we're talking about. We talked about horsemanship earlier, we talked about shoot process, and we probably should have gone horsemanship, selling cattle, and then shoot side. But we got them a little backwards today, but it works. And uh, all right. Well, I think, uh, I know a lot of you have been studying this stuff a long time, and, and it's stockmanship, or settling cattle, or any of these things, real horsemanship is real hard to teach because it, it, it involves feel. You gotta make a decision while you're in the moment, in the action. And so we've come up with these things to teach people how to be better stockmen. And like your grandpa and grandma and your dad or whatever, they were probably real good stockmen, or they weren't, but you've been around good stockmen, but they don't know how to explain it. So Temple Grandin, some of the pioneers have come up with these terms to get to be better stockmen. And one of them is flight zone. And flight zone's a real good term, really nice. If you penetrate the flight zone, the animal flees. If you don't, it's a good way to start understanding things. But if you just go on that, you're not gonna advance to where we're talking about what you need to do to settle cattle. You gotta understand kind of feel and where that flight zone is and how to shrink that flight zone down enough. Or if you have real gentle cattle, 
maybe to increase that flight zone just a little bit. So I guess for settling cattle, the thing is, is you're changing the flight zone. And what you're doing is you're changing the animal's mind from wanting to get away from you to being okay being with you and around that feed mill, around these pens, around trucks, you're trying to get these cattle's mind settled to where they can stay where they're at and be comfortable and get on the gate. So I think that's a real important thing to think about. So flight zone, that's an interesting concept, flight zone. So we've been talking about this for several years and instead of flight zone, which is the way you should talk about it at first, now let's start changing our mindset to pressure zone. And let's figure out what kind of pressures are causing stress in these cattle or causing them not to want to be there. What's causing pressure on this horse to not to want to be here or buck me off. And if you figure out the wrong pressures and get rid of them and figure out the correct pressures and create those, pretty soon you're gonna have cattle that are ready to perform for you. So that's the first place I think we gotta look at. Pressure, pressure zones. And, and uh, then balance point. Everybody talks a lot about balance point. Yeah, did you cut him off? <laughs> yeah, balance point is a really, you know, every diagram you ever see, it's got the flight zone circle drawn around the cow and a line drawn at the point of the shoulder and that's the balance point. Indicating if you go past that or go behind the point of balance, the animal will move forward or vice versa. Well, that's not a static point on an animal. There's nothing about a shoulder that makes one move forward or move backwards. So it's where you're at in relationship to the eye and that allows you then to change point of balance. And we can draw cattle out. I don't know if y'all were here previous uh, session, but we were drawing those cattle out from quite a distance with a point of balance probably 10 to 20 feet out in front of them, some of them. So that's not a static point and we can change it, we can manage it and make it work to our advantage. A lot of times in a lead up to a shoot, the, when you walk past that shoulder, that's when they move forward. And I think that's where that diagram came from, but it's not the, the be all end all about point of balance. So we can change that in cattle. <clears throat> and I, I, I don't know if I've ever used this analogy in, when Kurt and I have been doing these or not, but we talk about settling cattle. How many of you have been to a cutting horse competition? All right. What's the most boring thing that happens in a cutting horse competition? Settling the cattle, right? That's when all the beer gets bought, that's when all the girls get chased, all the boys get chased. And so, it's a, some of y'all are laughing, y'all been there. But it's an it's a intermission in there. But if you don't have a, somebody settle the cattle properly, you wind up with a cow scattering. It's not really a good cutting because they won't stay settled, they won't take that pressure. So to me, there's a lot of things to think about there. And anybody ever been to a cutting where the cattle are pre-settled? Where they just run them out, run back and forth in front of them about twice and they start cutting on them. They do that at the Fort Worth Stock Show all the time. That is snappy. You can run five horses through there in no time, that's kind of what we're talking about here in my opinion. We get these cattle ready, we get them settled, and when we really need to go to working on them, they are ready to work. We don't have to resettle them every time and go back and, and start over if we do it right the first time. I don't know if he agrees with that or not, but... You bet. Yeah, I agree. I agree with everything you say all the time. Well, that's, that's not true. I know that to be a incorrect. So, so, let's, uh, so the thing is, when we're settling cattle, you got, and, and I agree, you're settling the animal, but you're actually trying to get their mind where you want it to be. So if I'm riding this horse and I first ride, or maybe he's a stampeder, and he's gonna run off. Well, I'm right here and he's right here, but his mind is clear out there where he's running to. So when he takes off running, I can pull all I want here, but he's trying to catch up with his mind. And, and the only way I'll get him stopped is, is I gotta put his mind back on his head and then stop his feet. And so cattle like trotty cattle, they're real ready to kind of get up and go. And their, their mind is not where they're at, their mind is looking out in front of them. And so when they get some, a boo or something, they take off and try to catch up with their mind. That's how I look at it in my mind. And it helps me. So, so settling, or even moving cattle that have a lot of trot to them. Especially real athletic cattle that have trot. Tell your Hawaii story. Yeah, so uh, Hawaii, we went and uh, 
my wife and I went over and rode some horses, and then we were kind of helping settle their wean calves. And their calves are a little bit wilder. Some calves are kind of wild over there. And anyway, so we worked on them quite a bit, got them where we could stop them. And then, uh, but the thing I learned there, when you have eight, 900 head of calves that'll stampede in just a drop of a hat, is what you got to do is you got to watch that first calf. And when you see one picking his head up, getting ready to go, you stop that and you change that mindset, and then you stop the whole bunch. But if you let one calf get moving or going, the whole bunch panics and you have them running off. So I learned through quite a bit of trial and error there that you really got to watch your whole bunch. And when they get ready to go, you stop that one, and then you go figure out the next one that's going to get you. And that's how you can, very few people can hold up a bunch of cattle. So you got to keep their mind on their body. And that's what happened in the old stampede days. That's the lightning strike and the, those longhorns would take off and go to clacking horns and their mind was 15, 20 miles up the trail. And so that's real important, I think, for settling cattle. To get your mind right, I just, I just and riding a colt, if he's wanting to run off, I'm always trying to bring his mind back right to there and then fix his feet. And hopefully that'll kind of give you a, a mindset of what we're trying to do here. So you got to look at your cattle and you got to understand where they're at. So like these cattle that were uh, right after they were through the chute, they might be a little more trotty than before they went through the chute. And so when you go to take them back to their home pen or you're going to take them to a pasture or something, they might be a lot different to handle than they were when you started. So then you might want to do a little settling and get them woed up and get their mind right before you kick them out the gate. So that's, that's one part of settling cattle. The other, go ahead. The interesting part is that, that every time you do it, it gets easier if you're doing it right. So if you get them stirred up coming out of the shoes, a lot of times it's real easy to settle them back down as you take them back to their home pen or whatever. But it needs to be done if they're stirred up. And back to the horse thing, it can get to be a pattern. If you've got a bunch of old cows that you work through the chute two or three times a, a year, just like a barrel horse, they, they start anticipating the barrel run before they ever get in the arena. Sometimes your cattle start getting stirred up and they start seeing the corrals coming up and they know that pressure's coming. So you got to think about settling cattle on the front side and the back side. Can we get some out? Yes, sir. <clears throat> you want me to bring them to you and you settle them or sure. stop slowing them? I'll do that. I'm gonna, as I go down there, I'm going to try to get these cattle up so they don't go to running over one another. Just out of a little bit of respect for them. They're getting pretty, pretty calm or pretty gentle. So the tradition in Texas and what I've learned since coming to Texas quite a bit is leading cattle. Leading cattle when you're taking them somewhere. And, and I really think there's an art to leading cattle and that's a part, that's settling cattle from the front. And so when you bring a bunch of cattle out and going somewhere, if you get out in front of those cattle, to lead those cattle properly, you've got to figure out the distance where their mind is and keep that mind. You don't want to push it back and slow them down, but you don't want to get out there too far in front of them and then they don't have the draw. The other thing is, is you're leading cattle or you're trying to settle cattle and you don't get out, if you stop and they're going faster than you are, they're going to split and go around you, and then you're in a spot to make them even wilder. So settling cattle is a real fun thing, and it's a real, uh, it's a very, uh, it's a real mind game. Okay, I'll help you get them by you. No, go ahead, I'll, I'll send them by you. I'm going to hold them up here until you get them kind of that way. A little slow to move around, so we'll just take a little bit of time. I don't want to push them here. And if you do, you're going to stir them up more than you'd have to. <clears throat> but now as, as they start to come out, Kurt's going to pick them up, and I'll let Kurt talk about what he's going to do. So here, these cattle are pretty, pretty slow. If they were coming out of her trot, I'd have to be trotting to stay out where I need to be. But here, I got to get out farther ahead because I they can't, Ron can't even get them out of the deal. But right here, what I see is a lot of people when they try to stop cattle or slow them down, 
they don't, what they do is they spread the cattle out. They spread the cattle out and then you need more help. But if you, if you stop cattle properly, if you stop them properly, you'll stop them where they're all looking at you and they'll be drawn together and you'll keep them bunched up as if they're trailing themselves. But you gotta, you gotta slow them down like you slow a train down. You can't just stop it. You gotta slow it down, slow it down, and then stop it. And then once you stop it, you better stay busy enough here. If I want them to keep looking at me, I gotta keep moving my horse so they'll, they'll, they'll keep watching me. And I'll just get them to stop. And when I think cattle are, when I'm first trying to settle cattle, I think about their front feet, just like catching a horse. All I wanna do is get their weight on both front feet, even. And if they have their weight on both front feet even, like there's the bro brockle face just, just squared up. He should move his left, left foot. He's gonna, that's pretty good. Now he could start grazing. If there's grass here, you see, now he could put his head down and go to grazing. But if they're wanting to trot or thinking about moving, they don't, they don't let their feet out to get comfortable so they can go to grazing. And that's how you can tell that your cattle are not settled or not even started to be settled. So I watch their front feet, I get their mind, and then like right, right here, we'll just, they're kind of held up, so now I'll start them again. Now I, well, a horse, he needs to be able to stop and start. So when you're trying to get cattle ready to settle, you need to also be able to get where they can leave smooth. So I'll ride across here like a border collie dog, then I'll back through, I'll step across here, start this side up here. Now that's a real nice way for cattle to leave. I can just keep sending them in here. We'll send here. Send here, we can just keep these cattle moving like driving a team. I'm keeping my right side of my team going where I want it to go. And then I gotta speed my left side up over here. So my left side, they're gonna make a turn to the left here. If the left side is going faster than the right side, they'll make a right hand turn. That's how you turn cattle from the back. You speed the, right, the left side up, slow the right side down, they make a left right hand turn. Now here, Ron, I'm just gonna hand them off to Ron and I'll send them right to him. And he's gonna not turn them back, but I'm gonna hand them off to him. And I've gotta just step up here, send these cattle towards him. And now, I had their mind, now Ron's gonna get their mind. This little black calf just looked around at me, me. I need to step out a little bit, draw his head back this way, and I can give him just a second. I need to scoot my horse out around him a little bit. He's getting too much pressure, in my opinion. These others in the back, they're coming to me. Now I was a little bit late getting over here, but now I can get, get their attention, get them stopped straight, and get them to, like Kurt said, get their feet still. It's interesting, the little cattle take a little longer to get still. They've got to move to the outside and get comfortable. These big cattle bump around a little bit, but they all tend to migrate to the side, and now they can get comfortable and, and stop. So it just takes a while to read them, and you know, with Kurt in front of the cattle coming out a while ago, they never did pick up speed. If you just kicked them out of the gate, they might trot all the way across the pen or whatever, but with them being in front, it kind of actually slowed their movement from the start. It kept their mind, as he said, it, uh, their feet and their mind all in the same spot. They didn't try to trot off. So it's, a lot of times it's interesting to try to pick this stuff up in, in these small areas where you don't have cattle really be able to string out and, and get going. But uh, you know, anytime they have a tendency to, to want to flush and if this was another place we want to try to move them a little bit or what are you going to try to do now Kurt? There was a real good point in there Ron where, where that and you guys might have saw it where we can do it again here now this black calf has me on his mind so now I can step up here and I'll ask him to look at me and now I'm going to hand him off to Ron now Ron can step right there and if we were pulling this calf you see how I just handed him off to Ron he just looked at Ron and then Ron could take control of him when you're pulling cattle or trying to drive one off by himself, like now both of us, let's both chase him out the pen. Well, watch what happens here. When we both go, he can't take it because we're both putting pressure on him and he doesn't know where to take the pressure from. And he gets scared and he wants to run back to the bunch or go over and eat. That was pretty good. I guess that wasn't so bad. Yeah, we did. And now he's gonna pee too. Oh. So, but the thing is, an animal can only think of one thing at a time. And we, when we get scared that we're not gonna get him pulled, when everybody crowds them, then it's too much pressure from each side, and, it, and instead of settling him, it scares him, and he wants to run and get safe. 
So passing back and forth and having the mind on the person that's doing the settling or the moving is real important. It's really interesting as he moved out, another calf came with him and I, because they're kind of calm and easy to step down that one side, he stopped, went back to the herd, and we were able to pull the other one out. If you're pulling cattle, that's kind of the way I like to do it is maybe get them strung out and the ones you don't want just start dropping off and that way you just keep the movement going forward. It's interesting, the calf got over here, we trotted up behind him, he didn't really act like he was scared, but what, what did he do when he got over here? He defecated, that's kind of a sign of stress. So he, he did that, he took a bite or two and he decided he better get back to his crew. So it's interesting to watch some of those different signs and, and what they may be feeling without actually showing it sometimes. Now these cattle are so, they're really pretty dull. So we don't have to, we, I really, for these cattle to gain, I think we ought to put a little life in them. Just the opposite of what we thought we might do, right? So settling cattle or getting cattle to gain better is not always about slowing them down. They've got a, maybe they need a little exercise or maybe they need to, uh, they need to just get a little life in their body and get feeling better. They need to jump and buck and play a little bit. That's what they need to do. When cattle get this gentle, and this dull, pretty soon they don't have any life and enthusiasm. And so I think maybe a little more energy in these calves is what they need. It's interesting, we worked these calves in the, in the second session, I guess it was, we actually did a little bit of what I'd consider settling them, and now they're almost getting a little dull. So that's what goes back to the point, you don't have to keep settling and settling and settling cattle. It's, once you get them fixed, it's pretty easy to keep them that way. And I gotta be careful not to get too far up here. I'll draw them out. So I'm gonna let Kurt keep putting pressure. But if one gets here where I can, I can put a little pressure on this, this little black one. Maybe you can scoot him around the front or the other side. That was my bad, I was late. And this other thing, sometimes when I go after this one, I mess the whole thing up. So I shouldn't have done that. Uh, and we, we, huh? Yep, we can. We can start again. And that, that's, I fuss at people for doing what I just did right there all the time. Le lose the herd for one of them. That one's gonna come back. You know what Matthew used to say, there's an ocean on both sides, we're not gonna lose them. But they're also not responding to pressure. They're trying to look for an opening a little bit more than they need to. So I'm gonna put a little pressure on to get them moving. Now here we're, we're putting a little pr more pressure on these cattle because they, they've lost a little bit of feel as we've talked about. They can get a little dull, but if they, if they come off the truck too excited, you want to dull them down a little bit. But then you got to learn when to quit. And I see some people just work them to death, and that's not helping either. And uh, we've actually, I don't know if Dr. Daigle's here or not, but they did a little bit of exercise work in the feedlot. And if you force them to exercise any, it actually depresses gain. Now you can let them run and play a little bit and it don't hurt them. In fact, it may help a little bit. But you gotta be careful about trying to force some of these old, they're kinda like me, you force me to exercise, and it ain't good. It's just a near heart attack every time. And that's kind of the same thing with these fat old cattle. We'll let it, maybe we'll sort a little bit and just see if we can kind of settle them sorting. And you can even actually settle cattle by sorting them. So when uh, we'll step forward, kind of send them by, if I can. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step out of the way if I need to, or step in if I, if I need to help Kurt stop something. But sorting properly settles cattle and kind of sorting improperly maybe stirs cattle up. So we'll just send these, these uh, bigger cattle. We'll, we'll uh, there are those folks walking by, helped me quite a bit there. Now right here, I just got to trot forward. 
to slow these guys down, keep them from running off. I, got, I had to get out in front of their mind. That's a good example. I'm, I got to get out in front of his mind, change it, push it back on his body before I even ask him to turn back. So that, that's what I was talking about there with changing the, change the mind, the body. Now here, I'll see if I can get old Red to back up a step or two. And this is the point, if Kurt does get out of position a little bit, I can step over and keep that calf from wanting to come out, but I'm gonna try not to intervene because he's got something he wants to do with him. And we'll help him sort the other cattle out. Well, Blackie could have come out of the corner there, but he just decided not to. Now I'll, I'll send these, the black heifer out around and she should send some of these cattle out to me. I'll just step out here a little bit, back out here just a little bit, so I can kind of pull my block. And I'll, I'll just, I'll, I wanted to let that one go for a minute, just see if we could settle him later. But here now we're, now we got some movement here. Now I gotta, I gotta just, uh, just slow down here a little bit. And I'll see if I can, get my, my, my black heifer to step out and I'll stay still this time. Good, now I'll just back up and I'll give these heifers some, or these steers some room and let them settle and I'll see if Ron can get that other one and bring it back to me. And it's always interesting how we kind of lose our mind if we miss a sort. And a lot of times that's the easiest animal to get back out because they're, they're a little bit more flighty than some of the others. But here I can push on that eye and get this calf coming back around and we can both pick them up like we did that other one, maybe. <clears throat> but those other calves, they, uh, we'll put her back, that heifer back in with them. Now those other calves, we'll see if we can just let them draw this steer back in there. And we'll see if we can just put them all back in that pen without, this will be good. Good. Now, we gotta change their mind. They wanna go with the heifers, so we gotta change their mind, put their mind back on their body, get them all kinda looking in the same direction. And, uh, and I, don't, I do not wanna stop him because I want him to draw them out of that corner just like that. Now we've kinda gotta get them all facing the same direction or they're not gonna go very far or go anywhere to be honest. And every time I miss a sword, I don't get upset anymore. I used to, but I just say, obviously, that calf and I both need to practice, so let's just go get him and start over. And by keeping all of them thinking mode, we can get them to move and, and be responsive when we go back to get them. Then we can get the ones we need as we need it. Really? So that situation there, I missed one, but actually it got these cattle a lot better. They learned how to sort off those others, and I got to ride my horse a little more, and I like to sort cattle anyway, so it worked out all right. It wasn't a big deal, and a little bit embarrassing in front of a whole bunch of people, but. But it's, it's real life. I mean, and like I said, people just lose their mind if they miss a sort. I, God, it's like the end of the world. And but by us not losing our mind and just getting really crazy right here trying to hold everything, we went and got that calf, he learned something. He's sitting here calm as a cucumber. I don't have a lot of problem with it, but some people do. And I know it may slow you down a little bit, but like I said, we need to practice for missing them the first day. Yeah, that's right. And, and the cattle, you know, it was nice to see how those steers stayed there when we went to get the other one for quite a little while. And these cattle are pretty well settled and kind of want to be there. Now they're wanting to get back to their heifers. Now this little calf here has always been really interesting. He's, a, he's got more push to him than the others, and he has since the, we got here this morning. And he will push at you, run at you, but he's better than he was. Good, so that's a little sort deal, and they, those cattle aren't stirred up. And I tell you, I really think it's important when you're sorting cattle or doing things, when you got cattle tight, is really be careful about jamming things up. That's why every time you sort, you back up, and that draws those cattle off that back fence even in a tight alley. And what happens is if you, if you don't back up and you just work your horse in front or you have a flag and you whack them in the face, you gotta get farther and farther down and pretty soon you got all the cattle at the back of the alley and they're stepping down each other's cornet bands. And when you see cattle start stepping down each other's corbet bands, pretty soon you see them start jumping up on each other's backs. And right there you know you just change their mind from thinking to reacting like Ron was talking earlier. 
and now you got to force them to stop. And every time they get in the corral, they get nervous about that, that panic of that getting stepped down their cornet beds. So that's where I think sorting and working, I'd rather sort cattle in this deal right here than the alley anyway. I really think it's a lot easier and the cattle learn to sort there, they learn to hold up. And then if these were heifers, when they're three years old and you're out in the pasture holding them up and sorting, you got cattle you can sort outside and you don't have to bring them to the corral. So cattle need to know how to stop, they need how to go, they need how to wait. No different than this horse, so it's really fun stuff. Anybody have any questions? Arguments, comments. So we'll send these guys back over. Here again, I'll just speed up my left side. Now I got to speed up my right side. Now I'll speed up my left side. I got to really. Now when I ride up here, you'll see my cattle are going to stop because I. They're all going to turn and look at me here. So I kind of. Now I have to get them started again. We'll just put them back there with those calves. Good. It's interesting, you come up behind these, these gray heifers in particular very quick, they want to come back on you, they look for a different spot. Let's, uh, we'll talk about placing some cattle. Now we'll see if we can, uh, we'll see if we can't get, get them to come put their nose on that, that sack, that, that deal right there. This is a pretty good example right here, that water trough in front. When we got the cattle coming and we took pressure off, they drifted right to the water trough and started getting a little sip out of it. But now we can actually bring them to that. You want me to send them to you, Kurt? Or, oh, hey, let's just let them drift, just drift out. out. You can't drive cattle to a bunk or to that plate from the back because they're going to have their mind on you. So we got to be on their side and we'll just step them up there. Now this movement's going to push them forward. So what we got to do is we got to just try to draw their mind to that. So I got to get out here in front and get them, they're going to see this. So I got to get out here in front and try to draw their minds to where they pick up that, that, uh, that plate. So now they're going to stop there. I'll, I'll send these forward. Uh, I'm going to turn my horse backwards because I'd have put too much pressure to go on frontwards. So now I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw, here we go. So there's the first one's going to reach up and touch it maybe. And I'll just help these cattle to send him to it. But if they get going too fast, they're going to push him right over the top of the bunk. There, now watch him, he's going to put his head towards it. Here comes the red cat. Yeah, there's the first one to touch it. Now here comes another one. So you got to, when you're trying to put cattle somewhere and settle them somewhere or take them to the bunk, you can't, Ron probably couldn't drive them to it because he's in the wrong spot. When he puts his pressure on their mind's going to be back on Ron. So he can keep sending them to me. He can send this white heifer up towards me, but then it becomes my job to position myself as she comes around here. He's got to send there, he's going to send her to me, send her to me, send her to me. I'll just keep backing and drawing. Now i got to step forward. She's got her mind over there. And now I've got her. Ron's in a spot where he can't get to her. So i got to go. I'm going to see if I can just get her to step forward, step forward. Good. Got, got her partner. There's the other one. And now she can sneak in there. Right there. She got it. So that's real, real important. What we were talking about earlier, the drive, the draw, and the maintain, that's all working right there. And that's no different than catching a horse. You gotta go to them and approach, you can't drive them away, you can't draw them to you a lot of times. You just gotta get their feet still and then get their mind on you before you walk up and put the halter on. And that's really what settling cattle is kind of about. Now, I, I, really, I really enjoy doing that and I, I encourage you at home, 
to do some of those kind of things. Maybe get your replacement heifers or something and just do some of that stuff and see if you can't get the kids and somebody to go hang a, hang a sign on the fence and see if you can get them, go get them to touch it. And the first one does gets ice cream at Dairy Queen, a blizzard. I think Todd's into blizzards. Yep, and do the old upside down thing and go. So anyway, that's a lot of fun for me. And those kind of things, you might think, well, you're just wasting your time. It's not making you money. But really, those skills that you develop, they just become second nature. And, and then, then you're just doing them all the time. And I think folks, you folks that work cattle a lot and horses and have dogs and all that, you're doing so much stuff that you don't even know about. And if you just kind of fine tune it and start putting it in the right direction, it's really gonna pay off. Not only financially, but for how much fun it is doing this job. I think that's really fun. I was best with it. There's a young man that both of us know out in Nebraska, Rex Sexton. He uh, was talking about placing cattle in a grazing situation. And the conversation came up is, can you really get them to go where you need them to go and place them where you need them to go without really good movement in the cattle? And I got to thinking about that. You really do have to have them where they can go and drift and kind of just coast them to a stop where you need them to go. And it was interesting here, you know, both of us were around the cattle, but I wasn't doing anything when Kurt was trying to draw an eye. When he couldn't draw the heifer's eye around, then I could go in and push, but we can't both be pushing on them, but they don't know who to listen to. So that's something really important to think about. Make sure that two people aren't putting pressure on the same animal at the same time. At least not normally would you want to do that. Yep. Yeah, and this, this, fun, this fun factor with this kind of stuff, I, I'll, uh, this crew that's sitting here from Texana, when I was out there one time and we were messing around and God, this is quite a while ago, got a call and one of their bulls had got into the neighbor's place. You remember that, Brad? So. So we were working in the feed yard and they have a lot of outside stuff. And so a bunch, four, three or four of them jumped in the trailer and went over to get, get that bull out. And we'd been talking about this kind of stuff for the last couple of days and good bunch and they were having fun. And the thing is, they can get her done however you want, but they like getting her. So, so they go out and they come back with this bull and train their horses. And they jumped out and they said, we're, we're really having fun now. He said, we got out and we're going to rope him like we usually do and drag him in the trailer. And one of them said, well, let's try some of that BS that Kurt's been telling us. And uh, they loaded that bull just like we put him in that, those cattle up there on that deal. And they had so much fun getting him loaded that way that they really enjoyed it. Now, they were good. They could have roped him and drug him in there and got, got her done. And a lot of times you'll have to do that. But you can, being able to do some of this kind of stuff, it's so much fun. And it makes life and work so much more enjoyable. I just went to work for some folks that, that uh, they, they, they got, they made their, actually it's really nice because they made their money selling Wendy's hamburgers. So they, for, for everything we're trying to produce, now I'm getting to work for some folks that bought, bought our ranch from that. But, but, I am finding out when people like that buy a ranch, profit is not the number one thing. But I was wrong, profit is the number one thing. The reason we make money is to be able to enjoy the things that money can buy, like a Dairy Queen blizzard. So when these wealthy folks buy these ranches, they don't have to make money, but they have to make a profit. And that profit is enjoyment of the ranch. And so if I can take these folks out and we can have a nice horseback ride and we can move our cattle and settle them in the pasture next door, they really enjoy that. Why don't we do that? We have the chance to do that all the time. But sometimes when we go out work cattle or whatever, we get them out on before we even get there. That doesn't make any sense. And I've been there plenty of times. So that's something to think about. Have a good time. and. Your quality of life is a big part of your profit.